Hello, this is Brother Dale, and this is Faith Class number 10. Uh, today's subject is uh, the apostles asked Jesus to increase their faith. And he gave them a parallel uh, concerning their faith. In essence, you don't need your faith increased. You just need to use what you have. And so let's open our Bibles to Luke 17. And we'll begin there in just a moment. This is faith class number 10. Uh, the title of this message is Faith as a Servant. You and I are made in the image of God. And when God wants something done, his servants do that. He sends his angels out. Well, God gave you saving grace and saving faith, the measure of faith, to serve you to accomplish things in life. And so here we are in Luke 17. And uh, uh, the, the purpose of these faith classes is so that you'll have a simplistic understanding of different subjects of the Bible. We'll, after our faith classes, we'll go on to uh, grace classes, and then some authority classes, then some identity classes, and that way you can have a biblical understanding. In essence, you'll have a Bible college degree of understanding of the subjects of the Bible. And so here we are in Luke uh, 17, and let's look at verse uh, verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Now he just said to them, uh, if a man does you wrong seven times a day, you turn and forgive him seven times. They said, Lord, have mercy, increase our faith. Well, he said, you don't need your faith increased. You need to learn how to use it. And that's the purpose of these faith classes. And so he began to read, uh, he, if you had a faith as a grain of mustard seed, in other words, a seed will not, grow unless it's planted. Faith doesn't grow unless it's used. Say in the sycamine tree, be thou plucked up, be thou cast the sea, uh, uh, it shall obey you. Verse seven, but which you be having a servant? Now he's given an illustration that faith is your servant. Faith is your servant. If you have a mindset that you don't need to put pressure on people to get things done. You don't have to, when you have a need, you don't have to let everybody know that you have a need. If you'll put your faith on it, it will serve you. He said, well, what are you having a servant flying or feeding cattle? Well, say unto him, by and by, uh, come in from the field and sit down to, to eat. But will rather say unto him, make ready where I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward, you shall eat and drink. The purpose of your faith is to serve you. Does he thank that servant? No, that's his duty. The duty of your faith, let's call him faith man. God gave you a faith man to go out and move the mountain and move the problems. And so we should learn to have this mindset. Uh, I'll jump ahead just a little bit. In Philippians it said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be called equal with God. But he came in the form of a servant. We are, we are sons and daughters of God by choice excuse me, by birth, and servants by choice. Sons by birth, servants by choice. In 2 Peter 1 and 1, I'm just quoting this now, he said, them that have obtained like precious faith. We're talking about saving faith. We're talking about uh, faith that, uh, uh, faith that, uh, uh, common faith, not talking about the gift of faith. We'll, we'll attend that later. So let's go now to Romans 12. Now, bear in mind, we're talking about faith as a servant. Faith as a servant. Say that over and over. Faith is a servant. And so in Romans, the 12th chapter, let's look together. Um, here it talks about he has dealt to every man the measure of faith. It didn't say a measure. It said the measure. Look at verse 3. For, for, the say, for I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. The point I want to make today is in the Old Testament, they were saints saved by promise. But you and I are born again sons in reality. So you have faith abiding in you. They did not have faith abiding in them. 
You have the spirit abiding in you. They did not have the spirit abiding in them. So we're in a whole new class. We're in the class of new creation beings. They were not. And so he said, think soberly. Don't think highly of yourself like you've done anything, but learn to use your faith as a servant to accomplish the task that God has assigned you in the earth. Now, let's go to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Galatians 2 and 20. We'll have a lot of scripture today, but uh, that's, what, that's what teaching about faith is. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the whole purpose of this, it's impossible to please God without faith. So if you want to please God, you ought to learn to live and use your faith. And so Galatians 2 and 20, it says this, I am crucified with Christ. Do you know most believers do not understand that when Jesus was hanging on the cross, so were you? Do you understand that when Jesus was buried, so were you? When Jesus raised on the third day, so did you? We just come through Resurrection Sunday. We preached on the fact that we was raised up together, made to sit together. He died, we died. When you go to the, down to the altar and, and you humble yourself and you confess Jesus is Lord, that is the point of death. You died. Water baptism is an outward work showing what happened on the inside. A lot of spiritual things that we have happens on the inside. So he said here, I am crucified with Christ, never let I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live. Now notice that phraseology. The life that I now live in the flesh or in the natural. It's a whole different life. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. How, how are we supposed to live? We live by the faith of the Son of God. We live the life I now live in the natural. Whole different lifestyle. Uh, when you was a sinner, you didn't have the capacity to live by faith. But now you have this measure placed in you in the new birth, and now we live in this natural realm by the faith of the Son of God. Uh, let's now look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. We're, we're making an issue, laying out a foundation here, verse 23. He said, uh, well, let's back at verse 22. Well, the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, now notice the phrase, before faith came, before faith came, there was a time in the earth before the born-again believers, uh, faith hadn't came yet as it has today. They did not have faith abiding in them. That, that explains why Noah would work 500 years to build an ark, go through all of that, the ark, after the ark, built a vineyard and got drunk. He, he didn't have the God kind of faith living on the inside of him. And so before faith came, we were under the law, shut up unto the faith which should be revealed afterward. All the Old Testament is pointing to what the day that God could live inside. God so loved man that he even wanted to be close to him, he had him to build a tabernacle so that God could be close to his people. But it was never good enough. He wanted to live inside of his people. So you and I today have, have the attributes and character of God on the inside of us. He said, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. The Bible said about Abraham, uh, he believed God and righteousness was imputed to him. It wasn't because he was a great person. His faith in what God said gave God the right to make him righteous. So when you and I became righteous, not by rule keeping. All the Old Testament is about is keeping rules. Uh, being raised Pentecostal, uh, we were real heavy into bylaws and you, you can't cut your hair and you can't do this, you can't keep all the rules. Well, that, 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 was, that was given in the Old Testament to get us to a place of liberty and freedom of the New Testament. And so here we are, born again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking, sons of God, sons of God by, by birth, servants by choice. But afterward, 
When faith has come, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. No longer, under, well, you know, it's just like uh, going to school. When you go to school, say for 12 years, maybe even go to college for four years, but then to reach a point, you got to put into practice what you've learned. And so the old town was a schoolmaster until we could put into practice what we have. And so today God expects you to live by the faith of the Son of God. So uh, uh, the law was our schoolmaster to get us to this place. So now let's look at uh, uh, Galatians chapter, um, uh, well, let, let's go back just a little bit here. Uh, well, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5 and 6. The whole point of the teaching today is in the new birth we have obtained this precious faith. Uh, in Galatians 5 and 6, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but his faith that worketh by love. All about faith, the reason so many people have uh, trouble uh, using faith is because the motivation is not love. You can't love God and mistreat people. You can't love God and be mean to people. Uh, I've had ministries and ministered to pastors and preachers Lord over the years treat us wrong. And then next day, go to prayer. And I'm thinking, what good does this do to go and spend an hour in prayer if you treat somebody wrong? The Bible tells you your offering don't work. Go back to the altar. If you have all against a brother, go back and fix it. Uh, a lot of things don't work for people. They start off, increase our faith. They said that because he said, forgive someone seven times a day. In another scripture, it says 70 times a day. They said, dear God in heaven, 70 times a day, I gotta forgive that person, increase my faith. You don't need your faith increased. Faith is like a muscle. It is developed and strengthened as you use it. Actually, when you feel tired and sluggish, if you'll exercise, it will produce energy. Use what you have, and that's what this lesson today is use your faith and as a servant. Now, in Philippians 2, I'll go there in just a minute, but Jesus came down and he, even though he was the son of God, took on the form of a servant. So, servant, I was servant to God. I was, I was a child of God by birth, but I was servant by choice and, and faith was given to me to serve me. And so, you're made in the image of God. And, and so your faith should be working for you even though it's, don't call it back in until it gets its job done. Uh, and so people will believe God for something and then they'll uh, talk otherwise. Well, you just called your servant back off the field before he got his job done. Uh, if, you, if you feel all my needs are met and then go around in, in an hour or two, talk about all the lack and all the needs you have. Well, you just called your servant back off the field, keep him out there plowing, keep him out there working. Understand this, know in your heart and mind, even though when you can't see it, you can't feel it, that your, your faith is out there working because God said it was, okay? All right, so faith worketh by love. If your motivation is not the love of God, if your motive is not right, uh, if you don't treat people right, then your faith is, is, is hindered uh, and it won't produce like it should. In, in Galatians 5, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, now, when you got born again, you got placed in you faith, you got love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance. It says here in verse 23, Against such, there is no law or no force that can stop it. There's times that you need to understand you have to love people by faith. Because basically, there's a lot of people that are unlovely. So you have a lot of people to practice on. There's times you have to have joy by faith. Have patience by faith. So you are developing your faith in, in love and joy and peace and long-suffering. Uh, and over a period of time, it will get, develop and grow. And the Bible says here, these characters of God, 
that was deposited in you at the new birth will, will eventually bring you to a place where nothing can stop you. After all, it's the love of God. It's the faith of God. It's the joy of God. It's the peace of God. It's the patience of God. It's not you. It's him working through you. Now, the Holy Spirit does not have to develop love and joy. He's here to help you develop love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness and kindness. So work with the Holy Spirit and you'll find that these fruits will develop. Well, let's go a little further. I'll show it to you. Let's go to Philippians 2 and 5. Go to Philippians 2 and 5. It actually says the word work out. Now, when you think about the word work out, uh, you know, uh, you think about lifting a cup of coffee and, and a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts. That's a, that's a workout. But uh, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Philippians 2, uh, let's look at Philippians 2 and 5. 2 and 5. It talks about uh, uh, Jesus coming and he was he's our sample son. Let's look at verse 5. Let this mind, this is Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, Thought he not robbery to be equal with God. Here you are. Your spirit is in the form of God. Your spirit is godly, godlike. You have obtained the like precious faith. You have the love of God. You have all those deposits in you. But they be laying there dormant until you use them. As you use them, they will develop and grow. He said here, uh, but made of himself no reputation, took on himself the form of a servant. Now we're talking about faith as a servant, you as a servant. And so I'm a servant to God, my faith is a servant to me. I'm a servant to God, but my faith and my love and my joy and my faith, they're, they're here putting me to serve me. So have the mindset uh, of a servant's attitude. Being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself uh, to the, to, and he came obedient unto the death of the cross. Now, uh, now look at verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as I have always obeyed not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out. There it is. Work out, work out, or develop your own salvation. If you don't do it, nobody can do it for you. If you don't develop, now you, you, you have the potential, but if you don't develop them, then when the storm comes, your faith is not adequate to stand or resist the storm. And so don't try to build your house in the middle of a rainstorm. The Bible says also in the book of Luke, uh, dig deep, build your house on the foundation, and then when the storm comes, it cannot shake it. But if you build your house on the sand, which is the world system, when the storm comes, it will blow you away. And most Christians get blown away because they're not practicing the, the characters of God uh, on a regular basis. See, this should be a lifestyle. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Remember when we quoted that? So here it says, work out your own salvation. I can't do it for you. I can, I can, I can give it to you. I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. And so, and I can't apply it for you. Watch this, verse 13. For it is God which works in you. Understand, when love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness, and kind, that is not natural. These are godly traits. And so that is God working in you. When you can love someone unlovely, when you can forgive someone that's been mean to you, when you can forget and forgive, that is God working in you. Oftentimes I say this, we miss, we miss God by looking for the spectacular. And we miss the simplicity of him moving in us. And so, for it is God which worketh in us both to will and to do his good pleasure. To will and to do his good pleasure. So he's in there uh, doing his best to work himself out the attributes he put in there. Verse 15 that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in this world. 
do you do you understand when when we don't act like the world, we don't talk like the world, we don't think like the world, we stand out. And so your light is shining. The love of God through you shines. The faith of God through you shines. The patience of God through you shines. Uh, they, they know that the real you should get mad and should get upset and so forth and so on. But when you're able to control your emotions, that's temperance. They can see that God is in you and that's a witness. And he said here that we should shine his lights in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. The darker the world gets, the brighter we should shine. The darker sin and perversion gets, the brighter we should shine. And so uh, verse 16 tells us how, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, and I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Over the years, things that used to really bother me and worry me today basically don't even affect me. I didn't, and, and nobody has arrived. We just have left. But it's a better, better life for you when things don't upset you and things don't uh, pull you out of the love of God and don't pull you out of the faith of God. And so, uh, these lessons are to help you live a productive life in what Christ has made available. And so let's just revamp for a moment. We talked about he came, he gave you faith, it's your servant, I'm God's servant, my faith is my servant, love is my servant, uh, patience is my servant. That's to serve me, to get me to a place of, uh, of producing getting the mountain out of your life, get the tree out of your life, get the problems out of your life. Not that they're not there, but he enables you to go through the problems. And so uh, I would suggest listen to these faith classes over and over and over. People have the idea, if I could just get enough faith, if I could just get enough faith. Well, that's what the disciples thought. Lord, increase our faith. He said, you don't need to increase your faith. Use what you have. Plant your faith against a problem the same way you plant a seed in the ground. And then realize when that tree's not moving, that mountain's not moving, your faith is working behind the scenes. And so you can't, you can't judge what's going on in the spiritual realm by looking at the natural realm. Does that make sense? That's what he told us over and over. We walk by faith and not by sight. We're not moved by what we see. We're not moved by what we feel. Our emotions are not our boss. We're moved by what the Word of God says. And it takes time to retrain yourself. After the new birth, the biggest assignment you have is mind renewal. Mind renewal. Renewing your mind and renewing your mind and renewing your mind. The world teaches, you slap me, I'll slap you back harder. The world teaches, you mess with me, I'll get you. It may take me a few days, but I'll get you. Well, that's often what the, the, the Bible teaches, the New Testament. Understand now, we are New Testament. Now, that's what Jesus came along. Jesus did not teach Old Testament. Now, he quoted some, but he said, Moses brought the law, but I brought truth and grace. He said, the Old Testament says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, love your enemy. Well, you can't love your enemy on your own. But God gave you the capacity to love when he puts his love in you in the new birth. Wake up to the fact that now you are a son of the living God. Not just a servant. You're a servant of a choice. But by birth, you are a son of the living God. And you should conduct your lifestyle in the earth using the character of God that God gave you. Now, have you ever noticed uh, a, a baby and uh, maybe his daddy has big ears and there he's born and the baby's got big ears? Well, he took on the attributes physically of his daddy. Now, our physical body serves me. If I'm hungry... My feet get up, I go to the refrigerator, my hand opens the door, 
I get something to eat, I put it in my mouth, I swallow it, my body goes to work, okay? I don't lay awake at night thinking, is my food being digested? Is my food being digested? No, my body serves me. Faith is your servant. So you don't need to lay awake at night worrying that you, if your faith is working or not working. If you believe the Word of God, you speak the Word of God, you act on the Word of God, it's out there working, give God time, give, give, the, give your faith servant time to bring it to pass. So we want you to go over this and, and take notes and study this. Faith class number 10, we've got uh, uh, other uh, subjects we're going to go to shortly, but uh, this will be enough to go over and over and over. People don't understand, don't, don't assume you know everything. Uh, just because you hear it one time don't mean you have it. Uh, there's times uh, I, I've read the Bible uh, scripture and I've maybe read it dozens of times and all of a sudden it'll just jump out at you. What is that? That's, that at that point, that's come alive to you. That's revealed knowledge. And so that's what faith is. Faith is revealed from the Word of God. And so you may have to hear it and hear it and hear it. Faith does not come by having heard. That's a mistake. I say it this way. How many here had uh, turkey for Thanksgiving? Anybody raise your hand? Well, you are what you eat. Well, it may be a month later, you can remember you had turkey, but you can't draw any strength off of that remembering you had turkey. So it's an ongoing lifestyle of feeding your faith and feeding your faith and feeding your faith and drawing strength from it. Memory scripture remind of here, you can know them and not draw any strength in here. It has to be in your heart. It has to be a lively word in your heart to draw the energy out of the word of God. And that's how faith works. Similar to eating food. Actually, Jesus was called the bread of life. That's the reason that it's, it, the, the natural is a reflection of the spiritual. And that's the reason faith is a muscle. Your body is a servant. So is your spirit. Uh, faith uh, is a servant to your spirit man. And so uh, we want God's best for you. This is Brother Dale Begley doing faith class number 10. Many people have asked us how they can support our ministry. Uh, you can support us through PayPal on our website. It's Dale Begley World Outreach. Uh, you can support us through White Mail. Uh, our address is PO Box 623, Atoka, Oklahoma. That's 74525. You can now go to Google and put in Dale Begley Faith Classes, and my faith classes will come up. Uh, so we're doing everything we can to get the word out as quickly as we can. And so we, we thank you for your, your prayers, your support, and we, we trust you're enjoying these faith classes. God bless you and have a wonderful day.